All right, guys, well, I'm back today with a revolver that I've been wanting to get for a long time out to the channel. That is the Smith & Wesson 351 PD chambered in 22 mag. I actually picked this one up from guns.com, and I'm always posting the best deals from guns.com, especially on the used guns over on my 704 Tactical Gear page, sorry, 704 Gear page or 704 Tactical MeWe page. Uh, the MeWe page values privacy and freedom a little bit more than Facebook, and they don't sell you information. So I'm always posting the used guns over there. And you guys can use the make an offer feature and really save yourself a ton of money. This was light new with all of the paperwork, box, and information, but I got it for about $300 off the MSRP. Uh, so that saved myself a ton of money and I am in love with it. I've already taken it down to the range, but I wanted to repack it to kind of show you guys how it comes with the guns.com certification. Let's push this aside, talk about the specs and features of this Airlight PD, and talk about its performance down at the range and some reasons why you may want a seven shot concealable 22 mag. So the first thing you may notice is this looks like a traditional J-frame revolver, and that is because it's the same size and shape. Even these rosewood grips are very familiar to me because I had them on my six, actually my 442 Smith & Wesson 38 revolver. I also have the 642. Both of those are solid revolvers, and I've really fallen in love with them. Now, a lot of the complaints about those revolvers, though, is the stiff recoil because they are so ultra light and the low round count of only five rounds. This seeks to resolve both of those issues, but at the sacrifice of firepower or ballistic performance out of the cartridge chosen. This one holds seven rounds of 22 Magnum, giving you two more than traditional J-frame, as well as almost no recoil because even though the frame is incredibly lightweight, you still don't feel the recoil because you're shooting a 22 mag. So this is perfect for somebody who is ultra sensitive to recoil or maybe as a backup gun to your primary concealed carry. I want to show you guys the difference between 22 mag and 22 long rifle right here. And you definitely get better ballistic performance out of a longer rifle than you do a short barrel snub nose like this revolver. But you could tell a dramatic difference between the 22 mag cartridge and the 22 long rifle cartridge as you see here. You can also tell the difference because the specs on this box clearly state the differences in velocity, but again, this is most likely out of a 16-inch barrel, but you can see an increased velocity over the mini mags of about 600 feet per second, which is something to consider when you're purchasing a gun for personal defense. So I've already talked about the basic features of the fact that this is an incredibly ultralight frame, but it's almost hard to relay how lightweight it is on camera. If you've ever picked up a 642 or a 442 Airway 38 Special, this is even lighter than that because this has an aluminum cylinder and the cylinder itself is a little bit more narrow and it fits in your pocket a little bit better. They also make variations without the exposed hammer, which I may get for future pocket carry as a backup gun. Again, I can handle the recoil of a 9mm or something like that, so that is what I choose for primary carry, but having 7 shots of 22 mag is always a good backup up especially for like a, a camping scenario or a bug out scenario something like this is pretty slick 
Now, I've already talked about the fact that somebody who is ultra recoil sensitive may want a gun like this, and going along with somebody who's ultra recoil sensitive, you tend to think of somebody who may be a little bit more elderly, uh, may have arthritis in their hands, and as you get older, your eyes also age, and they've also addressed that issue with instead of the standard front sight, they've done a high-vis fiber optic orange front sight in a U-notch uh, U rear sight, and that is so incredibly nice on a revolver like this. You can simply point out quickly, acquire your targets, rattle off those seven shots and hit what you're aiming at. The trigger itself is reasonably stiff uh, when it's in double action mode, but surprisingly smooth and easy to control. Again, I can rattle off shots at seven yards, keeping them in fist sized groups, no problems whatsoever. And then the single action on this revolver is very impressive. Now, I don't want to dry fire this. I'm going to make sure it's clear one more time. Wrap my finger around here. I want to show you guys the trigger is so lightweight and crisp. There is almost no take up to that trigger whatsoever. If you decided you wanted to cock the hammer to make more precise shots, and you see you have some nice knurling on that hammer to allow you to do that. Uh, the cylinder is super easy to kick out with the texturing right here. And the shells, uh, they don't necessarily drop free like 38s because that 22 gets dirty quick. But you eject them the same way. Such a cool little revolver. So in summary, guys, if you're looking for something that packs a little bit more punch than a traditional 22 long rifle, but you don't want to make the step up to a 32 or a 38 special, Having seven rounds, a 22 mag is better than having nothing. Now, I do recommend higher calibers if you can carry them. I love the 9mm single stacks and a wide variety of other firearms. As you follow my channel, you'll know that's what I predominantly carry. But having something like this as a backup uh, to your primary carry is pretty cool. Or if somebody who is recoil sensitive and you really only looked at like 22 long rifle, I would take a look at this 351 PD and 22 mag. You definitely feel the difference um, between the 22 long rifle and 22 mag when you're shooting a handgun like this, but it is not that bad at all. You can absolutely manage and control that recoil no matter what your skill level is or no matter what you're doing with your hands. If you can control the 22 long rifle, you can control the 22 mag out of a revolver like this. 100% reliable, 100% function with three different types of ammunition, no issues whatsoever with the cylinder rotating and everything firing, no light primer strikes. I can absolutely recommend this handgun if it fits into the niche that you're looking for. Please leave in the comments below. I know a lot of guys are really into ballistics and performance of cartridges like the 22 mag versus the 22. Let me know your thoughts below. Is this a complete waste of time? Should you just get a 22 long rifle and forget 22 mag? I've heard a lot of arguments for that out of a short barrel. Or do you guys think don't even bother with any of this? It's best just to go for the 38 and suck it up. Uh, I love to hear those discussions. So please leave that in the comments below. And let's talk about it in a very civil way. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.